Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight, big announcements from Husker football on the hiring of more assistant coaches. Plus, how to keep your packages safe from thieves. But first night, making sure those holiday packages make it to their destinations on time. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Megan Conway. Rod has the night off. Deadlines are fast approaching to make sure your packages or holiday cards make it in time for Christmas. And, of course, with the staffing shortages across the nation. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez tells us how the United States Postal Service is doing here in Lincoln. After getting through a very busy shipping season last year during the pandemic, the United States Postal Service was ahead of the game and began hiring seasonal workers back in February. We've hired another 60,000 pre-career and 40,000 seasonal employees. We are ready. Here in Lincoln, the USPS wants employees home with their families for dinner. So instead of having mandatory overtime at night, they are starting deliveries as early as 6 in the morning. Please leave those porch lights on for us early in the morning because we've got folks out as early as 6 a.m. and we're delivering packages all throughout the morning so we can get those packages to you before you go to work and school. According to the Postmaster General, Lincoln is on schedule with deliveries. And early next year, they will be receiving new sorting machines that will help speed up the sorting process even more. They can process up to 3,200 packages per hour. So that's, that's 25,000 packages per eight hour shift. If you want to make sure your packages arrive to their final destinations before Christmas, the deadline through USPS is fast approaching. December 17th, that's the last day we're asking you to mail those first class letters, your Christmas cards. The following day, December 18th, that's for your packages priority mail, such as that. Now this post office on 700 R Street in Lincoln will actually be open for the next two Sundays from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon so that residents have more chances to get those packages in on time. Reporting in Lincoln, Ariana Martinez, Channel 8 News. Ariana, thank you very much for our top story tonight. And speaking of mail this holiday season, package thieves may be looking to take advantage of the increase in deliveries around the holiday season. A security expert says there are some steps that could help ensure packages on your doorstep don't get stolen. Like, for instance, keeping them out of sight, updating the delivery instructions to drop off at a a location other than your front porch can help or having your packages delivered to a neighbor's house or to your place of work. Another tip, put up a sign. But when they walk up there and all of a sudden they see a sign that says smile on camera, even if you don't have a camera, they're still going to you know, pause and probably walk the other way. And finally, track your package and turn on delivery notifications. Or you can also have your packages shipped to the store for you to pick up there. In national news now, the Biden administration unveiling stricter travel rules this week after the Omicron variant has been detected in over a dozen U.S. states. As of this week, the U.S. is now requiring all international travelers, regardless of vaccination status, to test for COVID-19 within 24 hours of their departure. It used to be 72 hours before their departure. You'll need to show proof of a negative test. The big thing travel agents say to do is purchase that travel insurance. Some people are now having issues where they travel and, and, and they get COVID there and then they have to quarantine for 10 days and that's expensive. So this travel insurance covers the cost of your quarantine. One positive COVID test could put you back thousands of dollars while you're traveling. The best thing you can do is plan ahead. Again, I want to make this clear. It's for international travelers, not domestic as of right now. But we'll have much more on this story coming up in our newscast tonight at 6 o'clock. To sports now, Nebraska football making some new staff additions after firing four offensive coaches this season. Channel 8's Kelsey Casper joins us now with the details. Kelsey? Yeah, Megan, two new faces are joining the Husker football staff as Scott Frost is slowly starting to build his arsenal and finally filling that offensive coordinator position. Well, it's Mark Whipple. He's Nebraska football's new offensive coordinator. Whipple is joining Lincoln from Pittsburgh, where he spent the last three seasons as their OC and quarterbacks coach, developing this guy right here, Kenny Pickett, a finalist for the Heisman this year. And Whipple has more than 40 years of coaching experience at both the college and professional level as he brings with them a pass-heavy offense 
with a team to a team without a starting quarterback. And Frost also hired Donovan Rayola as their new offensive line coach, and the name Rayola should ring a bell. He's a younger brother of Husker legend Dominic Rayola, but Donovan played his college years at Wisconsin and has spent the last four years as Chicago Bears assistant O-line coach. These two hires mark Scott Frost's third additions to the staff. The running backs coach is the only position left to fill. I'll have more coming up tonight at 10. Megan. Kelsey Casper, everyone, thank you very much for those updates tonight, Kelsey. In other news now, police in Arizona are cracking open a cold case that could have some ties back here to Lincoln. Arizona police say a man who was found dead on October 5th of 1995 has ties to the Lincoln and Independence, Iowa areas. Police say Robert Bresson was murdered and not identified until 2016 when DNA technology was finally able to identify the then John Doe. Anyone with more information, though, is asked to call the Coconino County Sheriff's Office. That number at the bottom of your screen there, 928-226-5089. We're going to have more on this investigation, and we're going to hear from his family members in our later newscast tonight. An 80,000-pound tanker truck crashed into a concrete barrier going 65 miles per hour today, but it was on purpose and for research. Researchers from the Midwest Roadside Safety Facility were testing a new, shorter concrete roadside barrier. It's designed to help keep the truck upright and to hopefully prevent the tank from rupturing. It was the first test like this in more than 30 years, and if the results are successful, it could lead to the first change in national standards in many decades. Well, and for an outside test like that, meteorologist Malcolm Byron, they had a very nice day today to do it. All right, continuing the warm streak outside. We're continuing to warm up compared to yesterday, and we will continue that trend into tomorrow as well. Made it up into the 50s this afternoon. Had lots of sunshine, but the clouds are returning. Here's a live look over our Shones roofing camera in Beatrice. You can see those clouds there. Again, it was a mild afternoon. Made it up to 51 degrees in the capital city, 52 in Beatrice. Middle 50s out towards the Tri-Cities, 54 the high in Grand Island, 55 in Kearney. We have since started to cool off. No longer seeing 50s on the map. We have 47 degrees in Lincoln. 49 Beatrice, even upper 30s out in Wahoo. Current temperature out that way, 39 degrees. Here are the clouds on satellite imagery, and there are more off towards the west. So for much of the overnight hours, we'll be mostly cloudy, despite uh, maybe some partial clearing before sunrise. Uh, again, we are keeping clouds in the forecast for the remainder of this evening. As a result, temperatures will hold steady, kind of like we've seen over the last several nights, 42 by 6 o'clock, 39 by 8 o'clock. Now, National Weather Service has issued several winter-related watches, warnings, advice, the difference between the two is really not important, but you'll notice uh, most of them are off towards the north. That does not mean that folks farther south will not see snow. Uh, coming up in my full forecast, we're going to outline the snow potential here in Lincoln, and we have our first forecast for uh, potential accumulations across southeast Nebraska. All right, Malcolm, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. On Capitol Hill, the spotlight is being put on Instagram and how it's affecting our youth. And the social media site announcing new safety tools for parents. Here's the story. Instagram CEO Adam Mosseri arriving on Capitol Hill under pressure. His testimony coming after whistleblower Frances Haugen went public a few months ago testifying herself about the company's own research that she said showed Instagram and Facebook can contribute to emotional problems among teens, particularly young girls. Mosseri answering questions today. I think that we are in diametrically opposed goals, the goals of parents out there and the goals of your company. We try and make Instagram as relevant as possible for people of all ages, including teens. But we also invest, I believe, more than anyone else in keeping people, including teens, safe. In recent weeks, Instagram's owner, Facebook, has made changes like switching the corporate name to Meta. And hours before Mosseri's testimony, Instagram announced it's launching new features to improve teen safety. Instagram's new features will let parents set time limits and will let them see how much time their kids are on the app. Parents will also be told if their child reports someone to Instagram. There should be limits. We need to give our kids limits. We need to know what they're doing. But the move is not stopping senders on Capitol Hill from grilling Mosseri about what the company has known regarding the mental health of teens using Instagram and calling for greater federal oversight. These changes fall way short of what we need. The time for self-policing and self-regulation is over. I want to assure you that we do have the same goal. We all want teens to be safe online. 
This is an industry-wide challenge and requires industry-wide solutions. Another new Instagram feature will ask users to take a break from the platform every now and then, reminding them to do something else. Alex Stone, ABC News, Los Angeles. Still to come on the news tonight, a special Christmas display in Lincoln honoring a family's late daughter. That story after the break. Satisfy a huge hunger. Decorating your house for Christmas is a tradition for many, including the Otto family from Lincoln. Photojournalist Anthony D'Agostino shows us why their display means more this year. Christmas was one of Nicole Otto's favorite seasons, especially spending it with her four children. She was always cheery and <laughs> she loved Christmas. Um, she always, she was crafty and always made stuff for people and those were always the best gifts. Last January at 37 years old, Nicole passed away due to complications of type 1 diabetes. This is Deb and Tim's first Christmas without their daughter. It was just going to be too hard to try to be cheery. They weren't planning on decorating this year, but their grandkids reminded them their daughter would have wanted them to continue the tradition. We went ahead and put them up and then we made a sign in her memory. Nicole was almost 17 when she started not feeling well and the doctor said it was type 1 diabetes. All we could do is it felt like we were just putting out fires with it. 21 years ago there wasn't the kind of treatment there is today and as she grew older Nicole would have episodes of diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA for short 
which would almost leave her in a coma. And every time she'd have one of those episodes, it was just that much more damage that was being done to her body. And so we just kind of watched her deteriorate. Eventually, she got an insulin pump, which kept her from having episodes of DKA all the time. But one night last January, she wasn't feeling well, and her family couldn't get a hold of her. Her boyfriend had called us. He asked if we would go check on her, or if we had heard from her. And we hadn't either. We tried again, and then we went over, and my other daughter and I are the ones that found her. And she had just passed. As difficult as this first Christmas is without her, this light display reminds them of Nicole. I hate to see another family go through what we went through because up from the loss of this yeah. disease. And they hope it will inspire others to donate to type 1 diabetes research. In Lincoln, Anthony D'Agostino, Channel 8 News. And we have a link to, on our website to donate to JDRF in Nicole's honor. And you can see the display at the intersection of 68th and Fremont Streets in Lincoln. In other national news now, geologists are keeping a close eye on one of North America's most active fault lines after more than 40 earthquakes rattled off the Oregon coast. The quakes started yesterday and continued into today, ranging from 3.5 to 5.8. The U.S. National Tsunami Warning Center says none of the quakes have triggered a tsunami alert yet. The swarm of earthquakes clustered about 250 miles west of Newport, Oregon, so they were far enough away that people on land couldn't detect them. No. Your Storm Alert Team forecast with meteorologist Malcolm Byron. Here's a live look downtown over our Allo Communications camera. Sunset was just over 15 minutes ago, and we have a pretty sunset out there as high clouds are moving back into the area. High clouds generally have that effect of making the sunset just a little bit more vibrant. What a nice day across southeast Nebraska. Made it up into the 50s for high temperatures. Uh, we have since cooled into the upper 40s at Lincoln Airport, sitting at 47 degrees right now. 46 in Seward, 46 as well in Milford. 45 degrees the current temperature in Friend. Broadening out the view, we see mostly upper 40s, except Wahoo sitting at 39 degrees at 49 in Beatrice, 45 in York and Aurora, 47 in Grand Island, 47 as well in Hastings. Again, we mentioned clouds are moving back into the area after a day of clear conditions, and these are going to stay with us for the next several hours and really throughout much of the overnight hours as well. Uh, mostly cloudy skies for tonight, 32 degrees, our forecast low. I do think we'll see some clearing probably about, I'd say, three hours before sunrise or so, but the majority of the overnight hours will be mostly cloudy. We'll keep temperatures uh, a little bit on the warmer side as a result compared to what we normally expect for this time of year, so right around freezing for a forecast low tonight. 55 on Thursday. We are continuing our warming trend into tomorrow. It's a mix of sun and clouds, and we do have mild temperatures in store. Uh, could be breezy at times tomorrow, and wind out of the north and northwest gusting upwards of 30 miles per hour at times. Now we are watching Friday storm system and there are several winter related uh, watches, warnings, advisories posted for uh, northern Nebraska. Now the differences between these two, uh, I'm not going to emphasize them here. Uh, there's just the better potential to see a more accumulating snowfall in the northern part of the state. That's why they have warnings out that way. But that doesn't mean we won't see snow in the southeastern part of the state. So as you've been mentioning over the last couple of days, we've been watching this area of low pressure that's going to develop in Colorado. It'll track through Kansas and as it does so early Friday morning, we'll see some snow in the northwestern part of the state as this area of low pressure tracks to the northeast kind of close to southeast Nebraska. The majority of the snow will fall to the northwest. Today the big question is how many pockets of dry air are going to entrain into the system and unfortunately that's going to end up being uh, in southeast Nebraska. Unfortunately if you are a snow lover uh, it seems like most are not in southeast Nebraska. Um, as we go forward in time this particular model does show a wintry mix in the late afternoon hours. If this does happen I think it's going to be very light activity. Eventually it'll transition to snow, but you'll notice uh, most of the snow is up to the north and as you head farther south, uh, we're on the very southern tail end of all the snowfall. So as you head farther south, accumulations will be hard to come by. As far as the chance of seeing over an inch of accumulations through Friday night and into Saturday morning, uh, down towards Beatrice, very, very small chances, but it quickly increases, especially as you get north of Lincoln out towards Columbus, about an 80% chance of seeing over an inch. 
How about two inches? Chance decreases even more for Beatrice. Zero percent chance down there. Small chance for Lincoln. I don't think we're going to see two inches in Lincoln. Best chance will be in northern Nebraska. As far as how much snowfall we're expecting, we're going to paint this zero to one inch rain for most of southern Nebraska. And keep in mind, there is a zero inches there. It is possible that some may see nothing, especially on the southern tail here. But as you get farther northward, accumulations do start to increase. Here is a look at our 10 day forecast. Again, breezy, a mix of sun and clouds on Thursday, 55 degrees. Degrees. Some afternoon and evening snow possible in Lincoln on Friday, 39 degrees. We'll keep things relatively cool on Saturday, 41 degrees. It'll be breezy, but warming things back up on Sunday. Sunny skies, 51 degrees, and then the mercury just climbs as we head in towards next week. Looking at 57 on Tuesday, 62 on Tuesday. If that pans out, that would be a record-breaking temperature, maybe even reaching the middle to upper 60s by next Wednesday. Ooh, snow in the upper 60s. Quite the forecast, Malcolm. Right. Temperature roller coaster. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Here's a look at Wall Street today. Some small increases. The Dow is up 35 points, NASDAQ gaining 100. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Tonight, after the powerful testimonies, get to the bottom of. From brazen criminals to one teen who thought outside the box and a family who found a way to make something old new again. Jeremy Roth has these stories and tonight's take a look at this. 
There's smash and grab, then there's this. A group of four suspects broke into a convenience store in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. In just over a minute, police say the suspects break into the store, throw a cable around an ATM machine, and rip it out using a stolen SUV. According to police, the same group tried to repeat this strategy at least two more times that night, but were unsuccessful. And while those thieves are still on the loose, this one was caught thanks to a father-son duo. Justin Bankhead was fed up with having packages stolen off the porch of his Provo, Utah home when he offered $500 to anyone who caught the thief. Lo and behold, it was his own son who went after the bountiful bounty. I really care until I heard about the bounty. 14-year-old Cody planted an active tracking device in a decoy box on their porch. Sure enough, the thief returned and snagged the package, but not before the would-be thief's getaway car almost got away after he forgot to put it in park. Justin and Cody tracked the box, and moments later, police arrested the alleged criminal. Finally, when backed up supply chains kept a Kansas family from building a new home on their farm, they decided to just move an old one there. Following weeks of planning, crews carefully moved this 100-year-old home 15 miles to its new location, a scene reminiscent of a Pixar classic. Their kids were saying, Mom, it's like up. I wish we could have just floated the house away. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Moving a house, quite the undertaking. Yeah, I think the best part about the criminals doing their deeds in these videos is the <laughs> little music in the background. I love it. Uh, yeah, makes them uh, look very professional. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Malcolm, one more check of our temperatures tonight. Uh, absolutely. It looks like we're going to drop to the, I'd say, middle to, or, or I should say, low to mid 40s by 6 o'clock. We have clouds overhead now, and I anticipate that they will stay overhead uh, throughout the next several hours and really into the overnight hours as well. So for the time being, we're going to keep temperatures steady. Now, I think temperatures will drop. I'd say about three hours before sunrise because I do think we'll start to see some clearing around then. 32 degrees is our overnight low. Uh, wind starting to pick up in the overnight hours. A southerly wind at around 7 to 15 miles per hour. But tomorrow we continue our mild trend. 55 degrees our forecast high. A mix of sun and clouds. Overall a very nice day outside. It'll be a breezy one. A north and northwest wind 20 to 20, 10 to 20 miles per hour with gusts up to 30 miles per hour possible. Enjoy it tomorrow because we start to cool off right Friday with potential for snow. All right, thank you, Malcolm, and thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you at 6 o'clock. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. Satisfy a huge hunger with Amigos Build It Burrito. We'll build it fresh just the way you want it. As a burrito or a bowl, build it big at Amigos. Closed captioning on channel.